And welcome to another episode of Civic Affairs with myself, Alex Parr, and my co-partner, our political correspondent, Andy Martins. Andy, tell me, how you doing today? Great, Alex. Good to be with you. And I was at the council meeting, and uh, now I'm here with you. Well, yeah, now we're going to dive into that council meeting a little bit. So what you were telling me, the first thing that goes on there are the proclamations. That's when yeah, some people are coming in to, to tell us a little bit about what they have to say. So Exactly. The consent agenda is always the first thing that uh, the mayor and council deal with at uh, 4.30. And that's simply delegations. There could be one, two, three, four. They all uh, present their um, whatever they have to say, their blurb. Then the mayor reads the uh, proclamation to them, and they get a copy of it from the mayor's office. Okay. So today, for example, there was the Seniors Protection Council that comes to council every year, and next week is the Seniors Protection Week, where you know it's to commemorate seniors feel threatened, and you know times have changed. That is completely they true. They want to feel safe, so. That was read, and also World Refugee Day, where Sault Ste. Marie has mm -hmm. taken in refugees, and both very, always very important events, and the mayor's office takes those requests and prioritizes them, of course, depending on the month, and they usually like it to come up very close to the event, the week, uh, special week or right, event. Right, it's still <laughs> going to be relevant. It's not right, going to be, hey, right. in a year and a half, we're thinking about doing this, absolutely. Right. So basically, yeah, and um, the, uh, the delegations have gone down a little bit. I remember in years past, I've been Sault Ste. Marie for 28 years. There were like sometimes there could be six to eight delegations. Okay, that's going to take some time then. Yeah, that's right. So and then usually that's set and the uh, item that we didn't have today because there was no planning agenda. Planning is also set for five thirty. It used to be six o'clock, okay. but now that. Council used to meet at 5 o'clock, but now it's 4.30, it's 5.30. So whatever council is doing at that time, the mayor calls, okay, it's time for planning. So, okay. But there were no planning items on the agenda today. So, Not for today. You know. They had a pretty light day, as you were saying. I think uh, Relatively. It was over just after 6.30. So, uh, and is that usually par for the course? It is, it, it's pretty light. Okay. You know, being June and things like People that. People want to get out there and enjoy I've that seen, weather. Again, and in years past where council agenda, this is going back to the late John Rosewell, the council agenda has lasted till 10 o'clock at night from 5 o'clock. So, um, you know, it, it depends what's, what's there in front of them. Right. So getting into the, the first thing on the list was a little bit speaking about the taxi industry that we have here in the Sioux. Do you want to touch on that for anything? Yeah, there were a couple of representatives speaking about the taxi industry. Uh, one gentleman mentioned that Toronto and other places down south, these taxi drivers are literally uh, being paid less than minimum wage, uh, which is consistent to what I've heard too, that you, know, you have to work 12 to insane amount of hours, 12 to 15 hours to make any money in the taxi industry. But he commended mayor and council, at least in Sault Ste. Marie, due to the diligence and the hard work that the um, most taxi drivers are um, being paid minimum wage. And of course the tips, but not everybody tips either. Exactly. And I, mean, I know a few people that are uh, taxi drivers in town, and they say that uh, sometimes it gets pretty ugly. Right. And I mean, for the employer to have to kind of hope that the tip comes so the, their driver gets a fair compensation is not really the best way to go about well, a practice. And with people, uh, waitresses too, it's the same thing. That is 100% um, true. With the minimum wage going up, I'll tell you a quick story. I will probably have a break coming up, but I was down visiting my daughter right at the beginning of the year, and just because the minimum wage went up, uh, Western Harbor Castle Hotel where was where I was. The contracts um, contracts there were not coinciding with the minimum wage increase that happened this year. So, uh, you know, um, it doesn't mean the minimum wage went up. 
these people would get a raise the next day. Right. Some people had to wait one or two years to get that minimal wage increase. I guess that's true too. So we also had a, the, the big election that just came and passed in between our last two episodes of the Civic Affairs. Um, did that affect anything at City Council or is it about going par for the course, excuse me again, but just keeping it going the way she normally goes? Um, no, I, not that I saw. They just congratulated Ross Romano and there's just a relationship with uh, Ross being at Queens Park. It was a very tight victory of very 414 tight. votes. But um, again, uh, the residents of Sault Ste. Marie, the best thing they can hope for is a working relationship between the mayor, the MPP, and the MP. Other than that, um, you know, Ross has his own levels and things to do as MPP. He gets separate inquiries and of course the municipal um, government doesn't have the authority that um, <clears throat> the provincial government has and some people were concerned that Doug Ford, Doug Ford as Premier has the ultimate authority with any municipality on Ontario. Right. If he feels it's not being run, he could go and address that and make changes. That's that's the reality. But I just wanted to go back to the taxi driving thing for a second so people out there can understand. Perhaps the reason that people aren't making um, a minimum wage in Toronto and Hamilton and down south is because Uber is tough competition down there mm -hmm. and Uber is providing a great service and uh, that's Uber just among the many business. Others. Yeah, many others are there and in the business so they're a piece of their pie they're not getting as right. much. So, but no there wasn't any mention to Ross and um, it's politics, there was only one winner here. Yes. Well, Andy, we will be right back after a quick break. We got plenty more of the city council meeting today to dive into, so don't go anywhere. And what did I say? As promised, more civic affairs with myself and Andy Martins. So Andy, now that we're going to take a look into a deeper part of the discussion during today at City Council, which was the PUC rate application, what can you tell me about that? Yes, there was a presentation from a PUC group. They had actually quite a number of the executives there and they have submitted a rate application to the Ontario Energy Board. This is necessary and as we were talking before the broadcast, uh, I ran for council in 2014 and I had some meetings with the PUC president at the time and it's necessary because we have a very aging infrastructure in Sault Ste. Marie. But on the upside, the green energy and all the um, the uh, green uh, solar has helped uh. that in that sense but they still need to go and apply for a rate increase but the rate increase is there for the lower consumption let's say below a thousand kilowatt hours okay now if you're most households will go a thousand two hundred kilowatt hours and, and above and um, so therefore, there's a minimal rate increase of, um, there. So there's no increase as you go okay. to 1,200 kilowatt hours. And uh, that's just uh, one kick at the cat, of course. Um, the provincial election, switching back to that, electricity was a big item. Mm -hmm. Why Kathleen Wynne? Um, it went down. The, um, it went down, and uh, you know the the anger that people had with paying the a backlash lot of, was the backlash. It was, was horrendous. Rampant. But the PUC people correctly pointed out, and I've been following this for a number of years mm -hmm. because I have electric heat and I can see my usage every day. So that's going to be really important to somebody oh, like you. It, and there's it, that's it, not it only is. you using heat like that, there's going to be plenty of people across the suit like yeah, that. Yeah, and there's also people that are hoping that the new Doug Ford government will get rid of the time of use, which legislates mm. 
you know, it's only that grain, the low usage, and um, we're paying, uh, you know, too much. So the time of use right now, just to give you a quick example of how <laughs> critical it is. Right now, I'm using, I have a house that's not small, but it's not big either. Right. Uh, I'm using 33 kilowatt hours a day right now. In the winter, I'm using 120 <laughs> kilowatt hours or 110, no, anywhere from 90 to 110 okay. kilowatt hours. And so what I'm getting at is now it's great, but you still have to make sure you pay your bill on a timely basis because you got to start keep accumulating the money. So people are hoping that the Doug Ford government will lower these costs, uh, lower by, I think he said 12%. Now, to, to hope that he's going to do it, is that optimistically thinking? Or? Well, I think it's going to be, a, it's a campaign promise. So, Doug Ford uh, cabinet will be um, brought forward next week. Okay. And he'll be sworn in um, after June 29th. But it, it's, it's a tough thing. So, anyway, there's a rate application and the PUC uh, will, says that Sault Ste. Marie will be one of the lowest in Northern Ontario, and also will continue that status Here's over hoping. the next five years, because it's a tough thing. You know, people that don't know how to manage it, that have electric heat, will run into trouble. And I've been there, Alex, mm -hmm. when I've, you know, in the Kathleen Wynn years, uh, 900 to to $1,000 just on your PUC bill. Just for the one month the they heat your house. Yeah, January, February. So <sighs> At that rate, you might want to break out, break out the blankets and say So Doug Ford uh, needs to address that, and uh, people will be happy um, that he will reduce the 12 to 15 or even more, get rid of the, the time of use, and even get rid of the smart meters in time. All things that are going to be huge During this whole, whole four-year mandate because it's all messed up by the Liberals and after 15 years they uh, took it on the chin. So um, I guess we're going to see what's coming of that. I mean, on, only time will tell. Exactly. But I think just a quick point to end the electricity piece. Uh, years went by with these li Liberal government. They gouged Ontario for 13.2%, 13.2 cents per kilowatt hour on the uh, high peak, mm -hmm. which is during the day. Oh, right. Meanwhile, they sold it off, the excess electricity to Quebec and to United States for two cents a kilowatt hour. So, hmm. Some uh, food for thought to say yeah, that. Least. Yeah, exactly. Is Doug Ford going to continue it? How is he going to shape reshape that, but he's got 75 members, he's got his hands full with getting a cabinet into place in the next week, so we shall be watching him. Like I said, time will tell. Electricity, and these people have to deal with it because of the cost to convert from electricity to gas are anywhere from ten to twelve thousand dollars if you don't have the ductwork in your house. So, right. you know, people can't afford that kind of stuff. I've looked at it and I, I'm not going to do it. You know, it's <laughs> it's not going to be me. <laughs> no, no. So it, it'll be an interesting thing, and we will watch how council reacts to this whole electricity. And even how the PUC will react well, themselves. I mean, like I said, four years ago, I was told by the PUC president they need to raise the rates, unfortunately, because the aging infrastructure and it, it, there's no free lunches. Right, uh, right. Well, Andy, we're going to throw it to another break. But like I say, don't go too far. We got plenty more to discuss from today's city council meeting, so stay tuned.
And welcome back to Civic Affairs with Alex and Andy. So Andy, a big issue everybody here faces, anybody that's behind a steering wheel faces, is the potholes. Like you're saying, they come up every single year, no matter how many times you fill them, you, what do you see next year? What do you see six months from that time? You see the potholes again. And they're hard to avoid, Alex. Well, I mean, Great Northern Road or any anywhere right now, you know, wherever I go, McNabb is bad. You get to know the streets that are really bad. But uh, yeah, that was coming up at council today because Council Shoemaker and all councillors get emails and people want to sue the city. Yeah, I'm I sure some of those emails are quite yeah. colorful yeah. too in variety. And, and the reality is this, I'm facing it myself as we talked before the broadcast, is that I've got to go in tomorrow for Elder Tyrod and there's this, the sway bar links, there's so many things, components in the front end and that's where you're going to get hammered on it yeah and it's dollars it adds up the two things that i'm going to do just so we can tell people out there the bread and butter of it right it's five hundred dollars to round it off <laughs> two items the sway bar links and the outer tie rod ends that's just two out of many front end components right. but anyway councillor shoemaker uh brought up a resolution that he would like to look at um the Ministry of Transportation has new and improved technology hmm. to make the asphalt last longer. And we need that desperately in the winter because the, um, the point was brought forward that City of Works employees, and they do a great job, uh, they uh, fill in the potholes and I've seen it. And then in the winter, months later, the problem still exists. Right. I mean, you'll see some of those same potholes just come back even bigger than they That's were the right. year before. So they're looking at new technology. The Ministry of Transportation has new and approved technology of asphalt that is made differently that may last six to eight months longer or a year longer than the other stuff that they currently have in Ottawa. It's being done there. Do we know any of the financial details on that? How much that new ash? No, would be? there was no financial details. They didn't go right forward. into the deep, deep but details. But the point financially was brought forward that um, the uh, asphalt, uh, you don't want to keep throwing money at the roads when um, the, uh, this asphalt, it might be a better investment for the long term for the right. city. Because you can't repave roads every year and there's so 20 25 year mm -hmm. lit waiting period of, of, of roads to get resurfaced an example that simpson street uh in the east end should have right. been done 10 to 15 years ago they're getting to it just now well this it year. is getting done though at the end of the day at least it is getting done. and the reason on some of these streets get really hammered is i know from years past because i was there on the bus uh, buses go down the street time and time again mm -hmm. they come down the street they go up the street that has a wear long. and tear effect over a 10-year period on the road so uh, the reality was yeah that they brought that forward and that made a lot of sense that the city would look at that because um, They've thrown a lot of money on the roads and it's not working because right. like anything else, computers, cell phones, new technology is always coming out every year, every second year. So why not use it with asphalt? Right, and I mean, if you can use the money to have a better solution instead of just using the same old one over and over and right. over they again, then the it's worth a look for city sure. City of Sault Ste. Marie a better bang for their buck. Exactly. And that was uh, received positively, and uh, we'll uh, we'll follow that uh, on our weekly show as time oh, goes forward. I mean, uh, if I have to dodge less uh, potholes, uh, and uh, I'm all do, for it. Do you find potholes a problem? Too, I do right? find potholes a problem, and I live out near the airport, so not so much on the main streets, but it's the side streets that not a lot of people use, right. so not a lot of people complain about it, and you can't really tell it's a problem if no one's saying anything. Right. They do get fixed over time, like all the other potholes do in the city, but I just find the ones in my area do take a little bit more time being attended to. Right, right. right. 
And next up in, in the agenda from today is the cannabis problem. That, that, that's something that's been very topical <laughs> for some time now, especially with the liberal government. Well, it is. And I mean, the reality is this is legislated from the federal government. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau ran on this. He ran on it in 2015, in November of 2015. And I mean, the reality is the millennials uh, voted for him in droves. And he brought that forward, he campaigned on it, so he's now delivering on the campaign promise. 14 communities have been selected in Ontario. We are one of them. And why this was on the agenda tonight is Councillor Myers and Councillor Hollingsworth brought it forward and said that it's sending the wrong message. Well, you didn't legislate it, they just want it the community to know where the mayor and council uh, stood on the okay. issue. And <laughs> needless to say, uh, it wasn't received in a, a tremendous way because, and rightly so, you can't, it would, it, the point was made by a number of councillors that had they voted yes on this, it would have uh, brought a negative connotation on Sault Ste. Marie. Again. I mean, especially after Steel Town Down, we, yeah. they already are worried about the, the perception of the Sioux, so I guess this is just some necessary steps that they feel are important to take. Right, and uh, I mean, uh, Sault Ste. Marie, the drug usage is higher than the provincial average, but you need to know that you, did, you can't change this. So um, the CAO was mentioning that we will probably get our retail cannabis site, and again, the city has no say in where it goes. Uh, we will get it at late summer, probably the end of August, beginning of September. Four sites have uh, been selected already in Thunder Bay and Toronto. And the big cities. And the debate is there. I mean, thinking just a personal a reflection on this, it's going to be like an LCBO store. Right. You're going to have the government legislate it. You're going to know exactly that it's safe. Rather than buying it on the street, you don't know what you're getting. And in my opinion, if we are going to do it recreationally and we are going to do it safely, that the government should That's have right. its big hand right in there regulating That's it right. the way it needs to go. Government regulates LC CBO, the government relate, uh, regulates lottery tickets, cigarettes, marijuana, because even the province of Ontario had no say in it. The federal government brought this forward. It's been passed. It's happening. And, 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 and that's just going to be it. That's, we're going to have to deal with it. And it, let's just hope that when it comes that we do it right. That's right. Right. Yeah. So we're going to throw it to one more break, but I'll be joined by Andy once more right after we come back with a little bit more on Council. And thanks for sticking with Civic Affairs with Alex and Andy. So this about wraps up our show, but we tried to get some guests on this week for the viewers back at home, just couldn't do it. So who are we in the works for trying to get out for the next well, Civic Affairs? Let me, and I know we have to wrap up. Let me tell you, Alex, this show's being received very well by the mayor, council, city staff, hey. fire department, uh, everybody I've talked to. We're gonna try and get Mayor Provenzano. Drum roll for that one. <laughs> Councillor, uh, Councillor Matt Shoemaker. Okay. And uh, CEO and president of the, um, Roy Rink of the Sioux right. Chamber of Commerce and uh, the fire chief. Uh, Andy well. knows all the big important people here in the city. <laughs> so I'll have some fun next month. Oh, morning. absolutely. So Andy, I got to thank you once again right. for coming, joining me on Civic Affairs. I mean, hey, you got your name up on there. So I mean, I you're did. just as important as I am here. Yeah, Alex so, and Andy, right? All right, <laughs> Alex and Andy, Andy and Alex. Still not sure on what we're going to do there, but I want to take this time to thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the On TV stream and this episode of Civic Affairs. We appreciate it more than you could imagine. So thank you for tuning in and have yourselves a great night.